Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John, this is Video Extruder. Welcome back to Fallout 3 Point Lookout. Where last time we had a lovely explore around some of the caves and swamps of Point Lookout. And I would say we found some really fun stuff there, stuff I've never really shown off before, which is kind of why I wanted to do this little challenge run, because Point Lookout has some really fun stuff hidden away in it. So, yeah, I was glad to show some of that off. But. Today it's time to start wrapping things up here because we're actually surprisingly close to the end of the main quest. The main quest is difficult in Point Lookout, but uh, it's not actually that long. There's a lot more that's just sort of hidden away for explorers, which I approve of. That was one of the things I really liked about Fallout 3. Like you start here, then you go over to the mansion, up to the cathedral, then you just go round to the sacred bog, so most people will fast travel back to Pilgrim's Landing, head right there. After you're done with that, back to Cathedral, back to Mansion, and then everything else takes place in this little corner of the map down here. So there's a huge chunk of swamp the game never forces you to go into if you just want to do the main plot, which is very cool. It's just like the actual main map of Fallout 3 in the Capital Wasteland, where there's a lot of stuff hidden away if you want to go and find it. Just fun stuff for explorers. It was a really good thing about the ethos of Fallout 3, about its design. So, uh, yeah... That was lovely. I hope we see more of it whenever Fallout 5 shows up. Right, back to my best friend and utter star, Desmond. I knew it. I knew that little bastard was behind all this. After all these years, he stuck his head out, and this is my chance to cut it off. Figuratively speaking, of course. Yes, indeed. There's a bit of history between these two. Galvert is my old rival. Centuries we've played this game. I knew he'd be stupid enough to hide so close to his family home. It's not a matter of hate. It's a matter of destiny. He is my enemy, and I do not suffer any bastard who opposes me to live. I knew he was here, and it is my intent to find him and call down a righteous fucking hammer on his head. Figurative, I mean. His head. I do just love the setup between Calvert and Desmond, where both of them are pre-war scientists who found different ways to survive the apocalypse. And having survived, they dedicate their time to trying to murder each other. It's marvellous. So, those halfwits are getting messages from the professor, right? So he's off somewhere, broadcasting to him. But without those buggers to do things for him, he can't do much for himself. So, we cut off his ability to talk to him, and he'll need to try harder. Maybe then I can find this squishy little worm and finish him off for good. Alright, fair enough. Nice and easy. How do we shut him down? If I know the Professor, he's using a high-frequency cognitive sign broadcast. I have the perfect device to jam up that little worm's talk box. All you need to do is take it to the highest point around and install it. Easy, right? In fact, it is as easy as he says. You'd expect it wouldn't be, but no, it actually is. Right, got myself a cog wave jammer. Let's go do this, because this quest is arguably the easiest in the entire game, because we've just basically begun thought control. And then just travel back to Pilgrim's Landing. It is I, Professor Calvert. Don't bother looking around. I'm in your mind. But aren't you Desmond's faithful little employee? Coming to gum up my work, are we? Well, I have a better idea. How about instead of playing his game, you destroy that nasty little device? Deposit it in the nearby trash compactor and we will never have to worry about it again. I assure you that the gratitude of Professor Calvert is worth a great deal more than that of a washed up old limey. So there you go, a choice, and you might be expecting, if you've never really looked into this quest that closely, you are now picking a side between Desmond and Calvert. But you're not. You can still pick either side down the line. So basically, the question now is, do you want to side with Desmond, at which point you'll be attacked from every side by the tribals that Calvert controls, or do you want to side with Calvert, in which case nothing happens, because Desmond's not got any agents working for him, aside from me. And this does not turn Desmond hostile, so uh, you kind of may as well. So there we go, trash compactor. Throw the cogwave jammer in there. Excellent! Most excellent! I knew that you would make the right choice. And now it is time for Desmond to meet his end. He's made a fatal mistake! Return to Calvert Mansion. I have something there that I'd like you to see. 
And that's it. That's literally it. You just go back to the mansion. The quest is done. So if you sign with that guy, it's very easy. Plus, if you don't side with that guy, there's a very good chance that Panada will actually be killed by the various tribals that spawn in. And then that's kind of bad because you don't really want to go losing another shop. Because uh, speaking of which, how's my shop over here? Who's actually uh, who's shown up in this part of the world now? Yes, Nadine's there. So, uh, while we're passing by, may as well go say hello to her. You've probably figured it out by now, because, you know, I didn't exactly make it difficult. But still, uh, hello there, Nadine. Hey, just in time. Found out who went rooting around in our skulls, and you'll never guess who it was. As a totally unrelated hint, I'm in charge of his boat now. So, Nadine now gets to be in charge of the boat, which is really, really damn good, because unlike Tobar, she doesn't charge you for tickets, you can now go backwards and forwards between here and the Capital Wasteland for free, which is absolutely magnificent, and yes indeed, Tobar, who actually had a bone saw and whatever in his inventory when you actually traded with him initially, he was the guy that did the surgery. A bit of a deal he had with the tribals to hack out a bit of their brain to make sure they had new recruits. And of course, having spoken to Haley, we know that other people, even those that didn't actually join the tribals, have had the same process done to them. Because Haley couldn't remember what was going on, because he's also had the surgery done. Yeah, looks like it. When the tribals would send someone to the swamp, he'd be waiting around to nab them when the Pungaseeds gassed him. He'd do his amateur surgery for the tribals and let us wander back, all in exchange for Punga fruit to trade. <laughs> Sweet little deal he had going on. Anyway, I figured you'd want a shot at some revenge, so I put him under citizen's arrest, sort of. So yeah, there you go. Basically, the trade was slaves for food. Marvelous, I guess, if you were him anyway. First things first, though. She hasn't actually killed Tobar, so into the engine room. This room is creepy as anything. Well, if it isn't my favorite traveler, and oh, what a trip you were on. Why, when you were under, you should have heard some of the things that came out of your mouth. But I suppose you're more interested in what came out of your head, aren't you? And yes, indeed, uh, Tobar, who is uh, wonderful but suddenly very creepy, uh, he was the guy that did it. Why do we do anything? You travel the world, kill people, take trophies that interest you, and move on. I'm much the same. The only difference is that my trophies are somewhat more medical in nature. Oh, and to be honest, I probably kill fewer people than you do. But I suppose it's time that came to an end. One way or another. You know what? He's not wrong, but he's also got a gun. Not much of a gun, but the backwater rifle will make short work of him. And do we get the... There's the crits. His head pops straight off. Job flipping done. And once again, he's got the same bone saw, forceps and tweezers he had previously. Other than that, nothing too major. He's got the Grifter's Fit, which is uh, okay, I guess. Charisma plus one, small guns plus five. But you'd never want to be wearing it in combat of the poor damage resistance. So uh, not really worth the trouble. And he does indeed keep all the bits of brain just floating in labelled jars. Though sadly, you can't zoom in and read the labels. So you can't verify which bit of brain belongs to Haley, say. Which is a shame. And on the nearest one on the table, familiar piece of brain. I'll be having that. Thank you very much indeed. Lump of brain has been added. I'm now just going to carry that around with me. Yes, indeed. Based on the number of jars and the number of bits of brain in each jar, he's been doing this a lot for a very long time. In fact, hang on. He just said he killed less people than me. Hang on a minute. I have literally only killed 31 people. Each of these jars contains, yeah, three, sometimes four bits of brain. So he has definitely killed more people than me. He was 100% wrong. Anyway, we can go hang out with Nadine and go back to the Capital Wasteland at any time, as I say, for free, which is very, very nice indeed. But for the time being, back to the mansion. Because, yes, indeed, it doesn't matter what you actually choose during that quest, what's about to happen will happen regardless. Here we go, going over to Desmond, just to say hello to him. Give it a second, maybe back off actually. The house goes kaboom. Lovely, absolutely lovely. Now, 
There is one difference depending on what you actually choose here, which is if you decide to side with Desmond, and by the way, that's the, uh, that's the quest done. So that was thought control. As I say, possibly the shortest, easiest quest in the entire game. It's slightly ridiculous. Yes, indeed. If you would started with Desmond, then here we go. There's a hatch to a panic room that he did mention previously. So go down in there. He would be in here had you sided with him. But because I didn't, he's not. That doesn't mean he's dead. He's just already over at the lighthouse. Though I can still help myself to all of his stuff, even though I just horribly betrayed him. One thing worth bothering with here, though, combat armor. Now that's presumably going to actually be in, yeah, better shape than my leather armor. So that's, yeah, 20 damage resistance versus this 10, because that's actually getting a bit worn down. So that, that is worth having on. And as that motorcycle helmet's only worth three now, I may as well go over to a hat, just in terms of perception plus one. Hang on, no. Need to remember, keep forgetting this, Fallout 3, perception is garbage, don't bother, just stick with the helmet, 2% damage reduction is better than perception plus 1. Which means we can now move straight onto the lighthouse, which is actually working, you're very very welcome indeed, for the finale, except... Not really the finale, just kind of, uh, sort of, uh, the finale, the plot's finale. The real finale, meanwhile, we'll get to straight after that. You know, I do sometimes wonder how, you know, given you come into the lighthouse and this just sort of uh, opens, maybe at some point the plan was going to be, uh, hey, in order to actually, you know, do the emergency override, uh, you need to make the lighthouse work because power into the bulb would make the floor something, something, something. It would explain why fixing the lighthouse does precisely nothing, but sadly, it never made it into the actual game. So, uh, let's go say hello to Desmond, because don't worry, he's going to be... Just about fine with me. And here we go, speak of the devil. You see, he hasn't shot me already, which is a marvellously good sign. You, you bastard, betray me, you fuck. You think you can betray me? You have one chance, exactly one chance to fucking redeem yourself in my eyes. We are going to go in there, and we are going to end this once and for fucking all. And you will help, or you will be my enemy. And you do not want to be my enemy. You see, he's actually willing to accept your help regardless, which is absolutely marvellous. And uh, all we need to do is uh, not going to side with this crazy brain thing. Just tell him you're still on his side. Well now, finally you show some goddamn sense. So, if you're on my side, why did you destroy my jammer? Why, plain and simple, because it was the best way to get him to drop his guards. And you? Impressive. Very impressive. Perhaps there's more to you than meets the eye. I suppose I had you wrong, and that in itself is a once-in-a-lifetime event. It is admittedly a bit odd that's not even a speech check. Like, you know, this guy will always accept your help, even if you're a bit of a dick to him. So, uh, you know what? Screw it, let's flip and go, because Desmond is very useful. Brace yourself, my friend. You're about to witness the end of an era. And I've got myself a lab access card there, marvellous. But before we go any further, do actually grab all of... No, don't sit down. Now is not the time for a nice sit. Get up, get some flipping ammo. And if you fancy it, a Gatling laser, but honestly, not really for me. But yeah, there's a load of good, useful stuff in here. So what we need to do now is fight our way through this area. And I believe at this moment, Desmond is... Okay. Those turrets aren't active for now, anyway. So, yeah, Desmond is not immortal at the minute. If you want to turn on him, you can do, I suppose. But you don't really have to. Security turret. Oh, that's, that's booby-trapped. Okay, so, I'd forgotten, there's a lot of traps in this area, like, a lot of flippin' traps. And I don't have the science for any of this business, so screw it, we'll just go through regardless, because, uh, hang on, switch, and, okay, now, now the turrets activate, but Desmond makes a very, very good distraction during this whole section. Which is marvellous. So yeah, with the right science, you could have just turned those off, so it wouldn't have been a problem. 
And now we start storming the place. And uh, Robo Brains, obviously. But yeah, if Desmond goes first, they do tend to go for Desmond, you know, first. Which is very convenient because uh, that gives me time uh, to line up my critical strikes. And even against Robo Brains, uh, now I've got small guns to 100. Uh, we're 100%. Only problem is Desmond does sort of ruin your chance of getting, you know, uh, sneak attack criticals and whatnot. But, for the most part, we should be okay for the minute. Hang on, uh, check terminal after terminal here. Right, nothing dramatic there, unfortunately. Nothing I can actually use, say, uh, turn off any defense. Just check the back of the terminal. No, that's safe. And, uh, safe's here. Everyone loves a safe. Especially as it gives you even more cocky stealth boys. I don't know why, but in this DLC, you have just got stealth boys coming out of your ears. In fact, as I've got flipping nine of the bastards, why not, to be honest, it'll make life just a little bit easier while we're going through this area, clearing out all the little monsters and whatnot. And one of these terminals does indeed explain how Calvert does what we see him do during the DLC. So if you just kind of put the brain in the right bit of metagel, because this is a robo brain producing facility, it can sort of project images over very short ranges. So this is supposed to be like a monstrous robo brain facility. Though, to be honest, Bethesda would kind of revisit this idea in Fallout 4's Automatron DLC, and arguably do it a lot more effectively there, because... Uh, yeah, the robo-brain facility in Fallout 4 really is the stuff of nightmares. And as time goes by, basically, yeah, you're just kind of looking for a variety of different skills or keys. So there's a very hard lock right there. There's a terminal here. I believe that was a moment ago. I swear that was average locked, but now it's opened up. Presumably because I already shot and killed this here robo-brain, who is carrying a security badge, giving me access to move forward and get out of the way of the ammo boxes, Desmond. So yeah, just gather up little badges and whatnot. That'll get you where you want to go. So here we flip and go. Start cracking all this open. Override with my little badge. And keep on keeping on. Keep on moving down. Because back in these days, yeah, Stealth Boys lasted approximately 10 million years. So you have plenty of time to take them out before there was any trouble. Here we go, more Robo Brains and more Badgers, and also a bunch of free stuff right now. We don't need to have a nap, as lovely as that would be. More Badgers at the side too, more stuff. Yeah, just grab Badgers, grab bits and pieces, grab any medicine if you fancy it. Radaway right is probably not so bad actually, so do actually grab that while you're passing by, and yeah. Need the key? Nope, sorry, wrong sort of key. This is an electronic key. So override security and on we go. Also, the game really, really, really wants you to use a Gatling laser. There's another one of them right here. Together with more pulse mines. Yeah, we haven't really needed uh, yet, to be honest. I was planning to use those to, you know, take out the robots. But as it turns out, Bagwater Rifle doing the job perfectly capably by itself. And have we got any more? No, that's just Desmond himself. I think we're okay for now. Here we go. These, of course, the prison cells uh, where people were kept before their brains were being scooped out. And there's a nice skeleton right there. Desmond's getting ahead of himself, but he does have a nice sniper rifle and plenty of flipping health. So if he wants to just go and do his own thing, I'd say let him, really. If I use him as a human shield if need be, that's very convenient. And I think we're just over into level 9 as well. So... Honestly, not sure what we actually need skill points for at this point. Um, I mean, I do have literally just enough to get science up to 50. I mean, may as well, to be honest. Sure, why not? And sure, take some more intense training too, because yeah, you didn't have a great selection of perks in Fallout 3. I will say that's something that both Fallout 4 and New Vegas improved significantly. The number of viable, good quality perks you could take at an early level. Endurance is fine. Uh, screw it, let's just have a little bit more in the way of VATs. And I believe uh, we're already here. Marvelous. Hello there, Calvert. This never fucking ends. You and your pathetic threats. There you are. A slippery bastard. At last, that's end this here and now. Ah, yes, Mr. Lockhart. At last we meet face to jar. But I'm afraid at the end of this, it is you who will 
will meet his end. No, Calvert. I brought someone with me. Someone very special. This stranger tricked you into letting me find where you were hiding. Yes, Desmond. But whose side is she on, do you know? Can you be sure? You always were so bad at choosing your allies. Well, we shall see, shall we? Destroy him. Yep. Screw it. No, no, no. Shut up, brain. We are indeed destroying you. So, now we actually make a choice. And we're going for this guy. And all we need to do is break the tank. That's it. And there we go. The robots will wake up over time. But you can actually take him out super quickly. And at that point, you're done. At last, the world is rid of that sniveling, disgusting, arrogant brain. Think of it. Everything he learned. Everything he had. It's all here. And it's all mine. Mine. Now, you might think that Desmond's planning to betray you at this point because he did just give an evil villain speech. But actually, no. Not in the slightest. Moron. You cannot possibly comprehend what this is worth. I've been battling with Calvert for over 200 years. And now, at last, I am the victor. And now... 200 years of technology, knowledge, and research that he stole from me. Every time he beat me, it doesn't matter now. Desmond's just great. So you know what? Ultimately, the stuff doesn't really matter. He just wants to win the moral victory. Several centuries later. And go on, can I have some? You're free to take whatever you find in this disgusting place. What I came for is of no interest to you. Enjoy your spoils. I don't think our paths will ever cross again, and I think we can both thank Christ and say hallelujah for that. And there we go. The brain has fallen, and most of the robots didn't even have time to wake up. I wasn't aware that we had anything else to say to each other. Oh, Desmond, I just wanted to say bye. And go on, this is where things get a little bit, well, sort of interesting, but it didn't actually go anywhere, unfortunately. If you ask Desmond what he's planning to do next... Now that we're rid of Calvert, I'll be heading north to pursue my next rival. There are only a few of us left now. The great game goes on. Sort of a... Uh, what's a word you'd understand? Microcosm? Yeah. It's a microcosm for the old world. So, Calvert was a great scientist, and Desmond has spent centuries hunting him down to murder him. And now he says he's going north to find another great scientist. And uh, what's north of roughly where we are? Somewhere around, like, Maryland, DC, somewhere in between? Boston. Boston and the Commonwealth are to the north of this area. And they already established in Fallout 3, though of course they would, you know, make up some new stuff about Boston in the replicated man in the base game of Fallout 3, the Boston and the Commonwealth, there were great scientific geniuses there. The synths came from there, so I'd like to think there was at one point a thought that Desmond might return in Fallout 4, hunting down some form of great scientist from pre-war who had managed to implant their consciousness into a synth, because all of that was set up in Fallout 3. But sadly, it never actually came to anything. I do consider it a bit of a missed opportunity that Desmond never actually showed up in Fallout 4, but it kind of feels like they were setting it up. So uh, who knows? Maybe one day we'll run into Desmond again. It would be marvellous if we did. Also, you may recall one other thing that Desmond did say right at the beginning of this DLC. Stick by me and you'll get a master's class in doing what has to be done. Yes, indeed. After Desmond decided to give you the superior defender perk, which is absolutely magnificent, he did indeed hint he would give you more training and thus more perks if you were to work with him, which he doesn't actually do. However, if you have a dig around in the files of Fallout 3, you'll find some clear evidence there were originally going to be more perks you could pick up from this DLC. Two in particular of note, Grey matters, meaning you take reduced damage to the head, which was probably tied to reclaiming your brain fragment that we saw a minute ago, so probably not from Desmond. But there was also Swing for the Fencers, which gave you a flat plus, oh, was it 5 or 10? It was a flat small amount of damage to all melee weapons, which we can only assume Desmond was going to give to the player later on if you were to stick with him. But unfortunately, 
He never actually did, which is a real shame. The alternative, of course, is Grey Matter's reduced damage to head might have been given to you by Calvert. But they changed Calvert, so if you side with him, he actually turns on you and tries to kill you. The gift he offers you is death. So, yeah, he doesn't actually give you any perk whatsoever. But possibly that was originally going to be a perk he gave you. But in either case, neither of them actually made it into the final game. So, uh, tragically, despite his promises, Desmond gives you no further training whatsoever. Also, you can go and find Professor Calvert down here. He is just chilling out. And you can, if you want to, just make him go pop. There we go. He just burst. And, yeah, you definitely want to kill him first because he wakes up robots during the fight but as soon as he dies he stops waking up robots so take him out first before you do anything else and now we get the goodie room all of the rewards so you know you've got some basic stuff some first aid some diddly diddly d but the real price here is the microwave emitter which is like a version of the Mesmatron from the base game, except it actually does real damage rather than just stunning people for enslavement purposes. The microwave emitter is actually pretty darn solid, because bear in mind, it's an energy weapon, and uh, yeah, my energy skill is only 15 right now, so uh, there's a lot of room for that stat to actually go up a little bit further. 46 damage, though, is decent, because uh, the big trick this gun's got is uh, it completely 100% ignores... Uh, all damage resistance. So uh, against the right enemy, particularly say the Enclave in the late base game, it can be very, very useful indeed because the base damage is higher than like most plasma weaponry for the most part. So uh, as a first strike weapon against heavily armored targets, very, very useful. Oh yeah, and don't forget the safe at the bottom of the workbench, which would you flipping believe it has a stealth boy in it because somebody just got really overexcited about stealth boys when they were making this DLC. Anyway, out we come onto a little island, and I was literally about to say this is the point where the idiot on the island starts shooting you if you haven't killed them. But uh, though I have already killed them, the idiot's actually respawned, so uh, he's going to start shooting me anyway. Well, I'm sure that's not a problem. I'm just going to make a swim for land, because he never actually follows you or anything. So, screw it, whatever. We'll just leave him to his island. It's fine. So, that there's the end, or rather it isn't. That's the end of the main story, but it is most definitely not the most difficult thing in the DLC, because uh, there's one quest we haven't dealt with yet. Okay, technically there's two. There's Spoonful of Whiskey, but that's a stupid fetch quest. I'm not doing it, it's pointless, there's no good reward for it. We're not flipping doing it. I'm referring, of course, to the Dark Heart of Black Hall, which is, uh, yes, an absolute flipping nightmare. So let's go do that. First things first, we've got to get to the ritual site, and unfortunately, that's gonna mean taking out a handful of trackers and whatnot, and as we've established previously, those guys are not flipping kidding around. So, back off while just laying down some fire, if you can just use fences, because they really, they really struggle with, oh, this fence has got to, oh, there's, there's more of them too. Okay, we'll just continue using fences because these guys are... Can we get them on the roof? We've got up on the roof. So this is, um, this is a problem they've got, actually. They're not very good at jumping or getting onto, you know, roofs. So basically, yeah, if you can get up on a high thing, they're kind of screwed and start running away from my terrifying superior tactics. Oh, fun thing, by the way, it's not just for show that they've got this lovely, lovely, big mutated arm. They use it to actually protect their head, which is actually kind of fun and clever. And by the way, you should be, you should be dead in a moment. Anytime you, anytime you, anytime you're ready. Yeah, he uses his arm to try and protect himself, which is kind of fun. There we go, he finally burst. Scrappers, however, nowhere near as much of a problem. With guns 100 and backwater, scrappers we should be able to deal with in a single VATS round. Now, we're still in caution, so somebody's not thrilled about this. But yeah, if you run into trouble close by to the actual ritual site, Hades Hardware is right here and you can get up on the roof. So all you need to do, really, is take out the ones with guns, then you should be able to just make a run for it. And by the way... There's more trouble here yet. You're a scrapper, but you're a scrapper with a gun, which is a concern. But we should be able to take you out before you cause too much trouble. Because, yeah, with Commando, 95%, even at fairly long range, is not so bad. And then with the critical chance built in, not too difficult 
to take these guys out. Now the question is, oh, you've got a gun tow. That's a concern, especially as I have no idea where you cocking are. What are you? If you're a... No, you're just a scrapper. That's not so bad, all things considered. Use the trees uh, for cover. Move up on him. Keep the trees uh, between you and him. And then when you're close enough, you should be able to... I think he's about to hide behind a tree, actually. Yes, he is. There we go. Now we should have a good shot at the head. 88%. If we get a single critical, that should hopefully be enough to... Not quite, actually. Not flipping quite. But, finish him off with a manual. Job done. Okay, ritual site has now been uncovered. Nothing too bad there. Now, inside, things do not initially seem that bad. But, uh, that's... That's not gonna last, because yeah, swamp folk are much, much worse than any of those robo brains that Calvert was throwing at ya. So, down into the basement, and things in here are peaceful. Worryingly peaceful, actually. For, you know, a great big ritual site, there's uh, mysteriously nobody guarding the Necronomicon. You know, their holy text. So, uh, what we've got instead is uh, this lovely uh, little descent in towards their chapel. But no one actually seems to be, uh, you know, around here. It's all a bit mysteriously empty because uh, it's going to stay that way for the time being. And by the way, yeah, if you actually uh, shoot those bubbles, they do burst. They do actually burst and cause a big explosion. It's not very powerful, but it does set people on fire. And setting people on fire does actually, you know, knock them down. Which can potentially be useful if you're getting a bit crowded. So, uh, by the way, you probably noticed there. Yet another cocking stealth boy, because why wouldn't there be one? But yeah, this area is a bit of a dead end. But if you need to, uh, fall back to this spot. Because the swamp can actually be a good way of dealing with these gets. But what we really want is right here. So, uh, the ritual room. Including, uh, there it is. There's the Necronomicon with a skull, and there's a corpse, and a ritual knife, and some, I don't know why there's stim packs. I'm going to be honest, I don't think she's getting up again. So when I take that, these guys are going to flood this area, which kind of works for me, because uh, this area is very, very tight. It's narrow corridors. Now, uh, that should, of course, work against you, because, you know, you need to escape this area, meaning you have to fight your way out, but... I've been keeping something in my back pocket, ready for precisely this scenario. What's that? 27 frag mines, don't mind if I flipping do. Now I don't know the exact spawn point for these guys, so I'm just going to create some small piles. So, uh, maybe, yeah, four a go. I'm just going to put a group of four down together. That's what we're going to do, and we're going to do that at every major corner so they don't trigger each other. They're only going to be triggered by a new enemy running over them. And this should hopefully do some very good work clearing out these guys before I need to fight them. If we're lucky anyway. So another pile of four right here. And I'm going to pretty much burn all of my frag mines here. Because uh, there's kind of no reason not to. This is uh, the single biggest challenge waiting for us now. Okay, I've kept a handful in my back pocket just in case I need them down the line for something. And maybe I want to add some more to that. We'll see. But we'll see how well that does. That might be enough. It depends how many of the big fat ones, the trackers there are. Because uh, the big lads can be trouble. And don't forget, of course, Stealth Boy. And also don't forget, Yao Guai meat. We didn't just get that for fun, because that is damage 10%. And maybe, don't forget Psycho either. So, stack those two things on top of each other. That works for me. So we're going to be taking the Holy Book, and now they're going to try and storm the ritual site. And there's an explosion. And there's another explosion. Okay, unfortunately they've already triggered... Some of the some of the mines. How many more are we looking at here? Brawlers, uh, scrappers. Uh, was that enough? No, I'm still in caution. I'm still in caution. There's a badly damaged scrapper and a creeper. Okay, creepers are like scrappers, but worse. You can see there. Look how much more damage this guy could take. 
Uh, so that's a concern. I need to... Oh, look at that. Look how much health I lost, like, immediately. This is why we have the... Oh, there's so many more. There's so many more. Okay. Um, go for critical. Please crit. That was a crit, but even then it wasn't enough. Yeah, creepers are, like, the high-level version of those guys. I'm down in the water now. And can you even get into the water? I don't know. Uh, okay, I need to... I need to get out of the water... And uh, hello over there. I see you've got a gun, but you've walked into a mine at one point and you're a scrapper. Come on, crit. That was a hedge cripple and he's reloading. And come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And come on. Come on. There we go. And more yet. Action points half back. Health is looking okay. Still in danger. Another scrapper, but he walked into some mines too. Come on. And... That is... Boom. Crit sends him flying. You see, that's, that's a lot of swamp folk. That's that's an awful lot of swamp folk, actually. But we seem to be okay for now. Unless more are about to spawn in. But that difficulty with the one creeper, that was with small guns 100, Psycho and Yaogwai meat. Like, those guys are not kidding around. That's why it's better to do point lookout at a low level. Because otherwise, uh, yeah, you have to deal with those guys all the flipping time instead of the scrappers. Doing it at a low level with a character that's rushed to small guns 100, uh, definitely the smarter idea. Okay, that's it for inside, but there might be more outside yet. If there are, I might just want to try and stealth boy straight past them. And the answer is... We seem to be good for now. Good, I couldn't remember whether more spawned outside or not. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a choice, of course. Do we give it back to the evil guy or do we give it to the woman who says it's evil and must be destroyed? Well, there's a very good solution to that. And the answer is both. Step one, return to Black Hall Manor and give him the book so you can get the thousand caps. The book. You found it. Quickly. Give it to me. And go on, sure. Here, have the book. Though, actually, what happens if you tell him you're not sure? Surely you're not considering giving it to Marcella. Come now. That woman can't rub two caps together. Give it to me and be paid. I like the fact he's staying focused on getting paid here. Marvellous. And actually, I don't know Marcella's dead yet, but my character apparently does. So yeah, if I actually challenge him about that... Can't say that I did. But that's all the more reason you should give the book to me. And uh, anything more from you? Nope, nothing at all. We had a bargain, Roughneck. Hand the book over and collect your fee. Alright, he's actually getting a bit more aggressive now, so go on. Give me the caps you can have for the book. Yes, yes, of course. Here's your errand fee. Now give it to me. And there we go. Book has been swapped for a thousand caps and he immediately gets up and starts heading off in... Where does he go? I can't remember. I'm going to follow him to find out. Aha! His secret underground evil basement that previously wasn't available to us. Yes! There we go. Now he's praying at the altar of dead things. Does he mind me being in here? He doesn't seem to. So yeah, we got ourselves a creeper. I mean, quite frankly, well done. Those guys are hard to kill. You've done a good job taking them out. Got yourself a nice little bathroom round the side here. Good, good, good. Just in case you need to go to the toilet during the worshipping of the old gods. Can you actually speak to him now? You shouldn't be here. Get out of my home. And uh, yes, indeed, I usually hide my bodies in the river, but this is nice too. We are nothing alike. More so than you could ever comprehend. Go now. Never return. And no, no, no. You specifically said that this was just superstitious nonsense that the swamp folk believed in. So uh, why are you doing it? Don't play it what you misunderstand, troglodyte. Get out. So yeah, he's not really willing to comment on that. But uh, fun fact, yeah, he's not a... Uh, He's not immortal. So he can just die now, which is marvellous. Meaning you get the thousand caps, but on top of that, you get yourself the Necronomicon. Absolutely flipping beautiful. 
And if we can, I'm just going to put him on the altar too. There we go. It's how he would have wanted to die, probably. Oh, don't forget his head, though. Don't forget his head. You can't forget his head. There we go. Beautiful. Now, back to Marcella, who apparently we already know is dead, even though we didn't actually go there yet. But whatever. She is indeed dead. So uh, let's go visit her. But approach cautiously, because uh, the people who we haven't actually seen kill her yet, but, you know, did kill her, they're still around. So we're going to want to be... Okay, there's, there's also mole rats here. So we just need to take them out too. Oh, we've even got a chance to use that sniper rifle I picked up bloody ages ago. That's nice. So we'll just see if we can pick off these gits. Oh yeah, they're starting to be alert to something going on here. Go on, hold still, you dicks. There we go. Number two goes down. One more. These are just basic smugglers, by the way. But the amount of XP they produce is actually not so bad. And there's number three. Who's starting to get a little bit worried. And down she goes. Beautiful. Those sneak attack crits doing the job very well. One, two, three. Dead. Back over to my normal weaponry. Please. Beautiful. So, back to Marcella's tent. Also, if you are still using leather armor, some of these guys will probably be wearing it. So, good chance to repair it up. But yeah, I've gone over to combat at this point. There we go. Poor dead Marcella. I wasn't wrong. Still, can't help myself too. Her last words, and more importantly, uh, her safe. Beautiful. Honestly, that's it's not that great, but I suppose it'll do. And she's going to give you the other potential solution to the quest. The much more difficult one that doesn't come with a reward, but thankfully, you can just get both. They attacked while I slept. I... I don't expect to survive. I only pray that... <laughs> That you haven't taken that book to Obadiah. You must take up my mission. There is one way to utterly destroy the Krivbekne. But you must take a pilgrimage far north of Point Lookout in the capital wasteland. Seek a place called Dunwich. Within is an obelisk itself a, a wicked thing it'll consume the book you need only press the book to its surface may god shed his blessings upon you child make haste for dunwich in many ways i consider this like the last proper mission of point lookout because yeah you can complete all the other missions of point lookout within point lookout but this one actually requires you to you know go back to the capital wasteland take something away from Point Lookout and go into an area that's actually fairly hidden away around the edge of the base game. So it's kind of cool. I do consider this like, you know, the last mission proper, especially as the Dunwich building was in the base game before Point Lookout actually came out. So uh, when people first came across it, it was just a bit of a mystery. But then once they actually released this DLC, it started to make a lot more sense, which was nice. That was a nice little touch, actually putting in something that was the solution before we knew what the question was. That's kind of fun indeed. So, uh, go on then. I would say it's time for us to head back to the Capital Wasteland and go and destroy this book to save the world from whatever dark power, presumably resurrecting the dead, it's normally resurrecting the dead, that the book possesses. Because we are pretty much done with Point Lookout itself. Absolutely, there are a few more bits and pieces to do, but at this point, I think we've covered pretty much all of the really interesting stuff. There's one more quest, Spoonful of Whiskey, and all you do is you go to a house that's about here. She says, bring me a giant pile of punga fruit, together with some yeast, together with some fish and batteries. And they are just all over the place, so it's just a fetch quest, it's not that interesting. Kenny and the Herzog Mine, that's kind of fun, we've been there, we've been to the Coastal Grotto... In terms of other stuff in the swamp, there's only like three or four more areas in here. There's like the Grower's Shank we passed by previously. Nothing too dramatic there. There's a graveyard over here that's got nothing special in it. There's literally a trash pile somewhere around here. Of course, there is actually the, uh, yeah, the actual camp itself that we passed by and snuck by previously. But that's just got a handful of robots and some ammo in it. There's nothing special there. We've kind of covered everything unique in the DLC at this point, because, uh, yeah, it's actually, you know, a fairly small geographical area, so there's not actually that much in this spot here. 
In which case, goodbye, Point Lookout. It has been a pleasure to revisit you because uh, I do think you're one of the best bits of DLC in Fallout 3. Not quite the pit good, but still pretty damn good. A close second, damn it. There's a lot of fun stuff here. And also, don't forget, of course, we need to reunite Nadine with her worried mother. And there we go. We have now got ourselves back to the Capital Wasteland. You are welcome, character who's voiced by the same voice actress as literally every other female character in this DLC. Oh, you're back. I am, and Nadine's back too, but honestly, she's mainly just going to be on the boat from now on. Yes, thank you so much. And now that she's got this boat and carrying all this cargo, well, I can afford to actually pay you. Thank you so much. And there we go, ten... Ten refined punga fruits. Okay, a little bit of money too. So actually, between that money and Obadiah's money, we've not done bad out of this. And now we just need to make our way over to the Dunwich building, which is admittedly a fairly long way away. So we might want to, yeah, start at Vault 101. That's a fair bit closer and also don't run along this road. There's a lot waiting along this road to ambush you. There's Flippin' Talon Company, there's raiders further up the road. Just don't run along this road, it's a bad time. Right, Vault 101, brand new day, and hello over there, that's... Ooh, Brotherhood Outcast, that's nice. Nice to run into you guys nice and early. Good, you guys will be helpful if I run into any trouble, but pretty much I'm just going to be going... And speak of the flipping devil, we ran straight into trouble. So, uh, don't worry guys, I can actually help on this occasion. So we'll just take out that Robo Brain together. Marvelous, bit of extra XP. Cheers guys. Yes, I'll just be heading pretty much straight at the Dunwich building at this point. And uh, shouldn't be anything too much on route, but then again... Uh, this is Fallout 3, so uh, who bloody knows what random encounters you're going to run into. Which is what was so good about the Capital Wasteland, and why it's my favourite wasteland in all of Fallout, really. Because you just didn't know what you were going to run into. Everything was just very random and anarchic, and it kind of, you know, suited the wasteland theme. Right, I'm most of the way there, a pretty uneventful trip, but enough raiders and basic stuff to kill that I've actually hit level 10. So screw it. Energy weapons up, may as well get some use out of the microwave machine, and... Uh, oh yes, finesse. Obviously. That's the perk that works better than any other perk in the game, with the backwater rifle. That's the flipping one, no question. Just a reminder, by the way, I've got luck of 10, so that is a critical chance with any random shot of 10%. Finesse gives you another 5%, so 15% of shots will get to critical. However, the backwater rifle, when it's in perfect condition, has a 5x critical multiplier. So that 15 goes up to 30, to 45, to 60, to 75%. Three quarters of all shots will get a critical. And here we go, the ruins of the Dunwich building. This book has been on one hell of a journey, but it's finally here to be destroyed once and for all. But first we've got to take out uh, ghouls. Quite a few ghouls, and on top of that, there is actually, yeah, a little bit of a story going on in here. Because this place isn't just an abandoned old ruin, there's skeletons, there's uh, ammo boxes. I'm not the first person to come this way. And in fact, actually, there's quite a bit of a story. In fact, okay, there's a lot of story. In fact, there's like five entries right here on this table. So go on then, sure, we'll listen to those while we're murdering some ghouls and whatnot. Why the hell would he come all the way out here? Dad's been a little nuts for some time now, but not like this. Leaving me in that crappy old hospital without waking me. Without a goddamn flashlight. I made enough selling the meds we scrounged to have kept us both fed at the colony for weeks. Now I'm almost out of rations, my shoes are pretty much destroyed, and I'm still chasing the old coot. By my last reckoning, he was headed south. And heading south, so they came from somewhere north of here. Maybe I shouldn't have waited so damn long to start tracking him. The trail's gone cold. I'm gonna wander with these guys a while. They say they wander the area. Maybe somebody's seen Dad. And when they say these guys are... I suspect these guys aren't doing so hot. These guys aren't who I thought they were. Jesus, they killed that family for a sack of rotten vegetables. Getting out of here next chance I can without catching a bullet. 
So those guys were, of course, raiders. And yeah, potentially these guys are not those guys, because these guys, he was still actually travelling with them. Don't know why these couldn't have been on. Well, I guess, you know, they're recorded at different times, which is why they can't be on the same tape. But still, feels like a bit of a waste of tape here. Hit a caravan today. Trev didn't see the kid and got popped. I took care of Tawny right then and put one in Thor before he saw her fall. That earned me some grub from the traders. Even better, they saw Dad. He was in pretty rough shape and still has the goddamn book. The trader says it gave him the creeps. Me too. But it's good to know he's still alive. Still headed south. And there we go. The book. The Necronomicon. And the final entry here. He must have been trying to trap food here. I recognize his snares. I can make out a building on the horizon. That must be where he headed. If not, at least I get a roof tonight. And there we go. That brings us here. So Jamie is somewhere in this building. We will indeed be uh, running into him. Not before we have to pop a few ghouls in the head mines. Fun thing, by the way, if you check the local map immediately, you might notice a door to the um, virulent underchambers. Yeah, that's where we want to get to, but this place is big and a little bit maze-like, so uh, might take me a moment to find my way there. Also, fortunately, these guys do a nice roar, which is, you know, very convenient for me just lining up a shot. And at this point, even though they've seen me, we should be talking, yeah, there's the critical, because 75% chance it's going to happen. So, this gun is basically, yeah, pretty much vastly more powerful than it actually says on the box, which is... Uh, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. The backwater rifle is so damn good. We should explore though because uh, there's more here yet deeper inside this here building. Jamie, tell me more. I don't like the look of this place. I don't like the smell. It gives me the creeps. Don't want to risk a shot at the crows till I know what's in there. Sneaking in tonight. Alright, so he was sneaking in tonight. Once again, he's somewhere in here. But there's more to this place than just the odd audio log and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, we'll be seeing that sooner rather than later. If you've never visited here before, by the way, you're in for a treat because this place is fun. Here we go. We've started to get ourselves some blood and surgery and uh, entry at number seven or two. The Raiders told spook stories about zombies in the ruins. Never saw anything like that where I come from. Lord help me. They're real. Not quite what Thor said, but close. These things look... I think they really used to be people. And that leads us into the Forsaken Ruins. Everyone loves the Forsaken Ruins, but don't worry. It's just ghouls, and ghouls cannot stand up to uh, near enough guaranteed constant critical hits. They just can't do it. So, oh, hello over there. And I think we'll also just find ourselves... Uh, yeah flashbacks this area goes full on a horror take one headshot that was a critical and probably a sneak attack too so you're going to be coming at me uh, momentarily okay i was kind of planning to back off into the corridor but screw it with these extra action points i've got myself another shot right here assuming you don't miss you did not and yes indeed glowing one ghosts there's proper ghosts and flashbacks in this area it's brilliant Fun connection between this Dunwich and the Dunwich in Fallout 4, by the way. If you actually look into this terminal right here, just inside the Forsaken Ruins, uh, yes indeed, this Dunwich was indeed selling borers, drilling equipment. And of course, in the Dunwich borers in Fallout 4, that's precisely where you get the next bit of this story. So uh, this is a story told across multiple games, which is very cool. It's very cool indeed, the connections between Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. This one, of course, paid off. Desmond sadly did not. And next to that terminal, entry number 8 as well. So let's see how Jamie was getting on. God help me. I found Dad today. I didn't think it was him. But... Face. The zombies didn't touch him. I think he was becoming like that. Didn't know it was him until I found that old book near him. And a rare example there of not getting a crit. Got the crit the second time when we didn't need it. Can't forget the book. All I have left of him. It's warm against the stone. I'll... I'll just rest a while. And yes, indeed. Poor old Jamie, most definitely himself, became a ghoul. The book 
did bad things to him and also drew him to the obelisk for whatever reason. So yeah, Dunwich, a mining company that sort of stumbled across something very otherworldly somehow or another. This is their headquarters, but presumably the place where the... I just fell down. Presumably the place where the book came from may well be the Dunwich Borers in Fallout 4. Oh, and praise be a Chinese assault rifle here as well. Is this a real one, by the way? Yes, trap terminals can't actually have passwords on them, so I know this one's real. Just the story of this guy who sadly died in here because he couldn't get past the ghouls. Oh, but that Chinese assault rifle, that's some sexy stuff right there. You know what? We're taking on ghouls. I feel like we should be using a shotgun. It's just traditional, damn it. Anyway, loop around this lovely area, many ghouls later, and we finally find our way to the virulent underchambers, our ultimate destination. And I believe, uh, Jamie's note, number nine. So this should be about the end of Jamie. Wonder how he's getting on. Sharp knife. Sharp knife to send him to Deep Temple. Flay and say my words. Abdul comes again on the feast of the weaker. Feast uh, for the Deep Temple. Born again. Here. al Yet. Yeah. Yet. Okay, so Jamie wasn't doing so hot. Doesn't sound great, to be honest. Just keep on keeping on. Got a few more ghouls to go down, but at this point, yeah. 75% on the critical, so you can just die. Yep, that's a critical. It's so nice. This build is just my favourite in Fallout 3, and actually in Fallout 4 too. Uh, just because, yeah, once you actually get constant criticals, it's just hilarious. Being able to just one-shot everything is beautiful. It's just so beautiful. And that was a critical against you, and you managed to get round the corner, you lucky git. Get back here, you. Get back here. All right, we want more criticals yet. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, not a critical on that occasion. 25% unflippin' lucky. And it's so nice just to be able to say, oh, I didn't get a critical in one particular shot. How unlucky I am. It's marvellous. And bear in mind, of course, if you do Wasteland Survival Guide, the quest, correctly, you can get another, what is it, 2 or 3% to your critical chance. So you definitely want to do that because that gets multiplied by five as well. I believe the absolute cap to critical chance in the game is 86% with luck 10, finesse, the right wasteland survival expert perk and this gun or any other gun that has five times multiply, which say uh, the sniper rifle actually does in this game. The basic sniper rifle does. So yeah, basically it's amazing this gun. 86% chance of getting a critical. It's just beautiful. Anyway, let's just keep on keeping on. Hello over there. Yeah, I'm just gonna shoot you. That was a critical right there. So that's, that's good. I'm just gonna shoot you again now. Oh, I kind of shot between your legs. That's absolutely fine. Come on, one more critical, please. That was a critical too, because why wouldn't it be? Also, don't forget the melee bobble head that is actually in here for some reason. And yeah, there's the Skyrim door, so we don't want that just yet. We need to sort out the book situation. And there we go. Now we're down into the caves. And what we want to do in here is uh, something fun, if I'm remembering this correctly, which is there's going to be a whole bunch of ghouls in here. Whole bunch of ghouls. And obviously, if they see me, they're going to attack. So screw it. I'm sitting on like nine stealth boys right now. What I want to do is just sneak in. Maybe turn the lights off a little bit. And now, there's the pillar. Because uh, when you actually press the book into the pillar, and by the way, there's Jamie right there against the pillar. That's Jamie doing his worship. And uh, let's just do this properly. Push the book into the surface. There is a burst of fire, and it sets all of the ghouls on fire. Which is lovely. Not enough to kill them, but... Enough to, you know, distract them a bit. And by the way, Jamie, you probably need to go down two. So one and uh, two. And anytime you're ready. And there we go. We took out poor Jamie, who went a bit off the deep end there, it must be said. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the um yeah, where's the where's my where's my Chinese my Chinese rifle actually? There we go. That'll do the job. 
Ghoul Ecology works on everybody, but you know, does actually work on ghouls too. So just mowing them down with my ridiculous thing. And there we go. That would be the quest complete, but technically I already completed the quest when I handed it over to Obadiah. But I made up for it by killing him. So yeah, you can actually set all the ghouls on fire by actually uh, just shoving the book into the pillar. The Pillar of Skulls. And also like a naked woman who's trying to escape, but well, actually she's not really being held back by the vines. She's between the vines. So, yeah, that's a thing anyway. That's that's a thing. There's Jamie. Poor old Jamie. Doesn't have too much on him. Chinese assault rifle doesn't hurt. Don't mind improving my rifle, actually, because uh, that thing's a beast. Yes, screw it. 102 damage. Flippin' love it. And there we go. Marcella's dying wish has been completed. The evil has been destroyed. Precisely what the nature of the evil was is not clear. It kind of seemed to turn Jamie into a ghoul, but then that was kind of more the obelisk. And we haven't actually destroyed the obelisk. So I feel like we've left the great evil completely intact, but whatever. We have destroyed at least one evil today. That's still worth clocking off early, I'd say. And with the evil defeated, ladies and gentlemen, I would say I think you get the point. And indeed, on top of you getting the point, I would say Point Lookout is... Uh, Pretty much as done as it can be, apart from Spoonful of Whiskey. But screw Spoonful of Whiskey, it's boring. It's a very boring, dull quest. It basically doesn't count as far as I'm concerned. We have seen pretty much all the fun toys Point Lookout has got to share. And on top of that, we have destroyed a terrifying Necronomicon level evil as well, which is flipping great. And I'd say that's probably a good time to end this series. Point Lookout is wonderful, but it's not the longest DLC in the world at all. But then... It doesn't need to be. I'm happy with the length it is. I think it's a good solid length, damn it. So, uh, I do hope you've enjoyed this. I do enjoy doing the level 1 naked survivors. In fact, I am thinking of doing another. Maybe not immediately. I don't know. I'll have to have a think about that. But, um, there is, of course, one obvious candidate. One that I haven't done in this format before. The Nightmare DLC. You know the one. I think you all know what I'm talking about here. There's one bit of Fallout DLC from this generation, which is... Uh, Probably the worst of all. Like, you know, next to that, Point Lookout, Lonesome Road, uh, they're nothing. I'm talking about the real nightmare, and uh, I might be willing to give it a go. Well, uh, we'll have to see. I need to do some planning for that one. That's going to take some, uh, some real planning. So, uh, who knows? Maybe I shall take on an even more ludicrous challenger very, very soon indeed. But if not, there'll be video essays coming up. There'll be other classic RPGs from the Interplay era. All sorts of bits and pieces to come, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, some other big things returning soon as well. I think you know what I'm talking about. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been the end of Fallout 3 Point Lookout with Level 1 Naked Survival. Thank you very much and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got a... I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out... Die, you moving bastards! Die! Die! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.